Hi everyone, and welcome back to the lab. In this video, I'll be generating acetic anhydride using the ketene lamp method. Before I begin, I really need to stress the danger of this procedure. Do not, absolutely do not try this at home. Uh, most university labs won't let you try this. Um, and here's why. If you look, these are the IDLH values for several compounds here. That's the immediately dangerous to life and health as established by a government agency whose job it is is to set workplace threshold standards for a lot of compounds. Now these aren't the safe thresholds. These are the immediately dangerous to life and health thresholds. This is causing damage type threshold. And you can see for hydrogen cyanide it's 50 parts per million. For phosgene it's only 2 parts per million. And for ketene, which is what we'll be generating of course, is 5 parts per million. 10 times more toxic than hydrogen cyanide by animal study. So. If that gives you any indication of how extremely toxic this stuff is, if it does escape, um, <laughs> that, that should be it. So yeah, long story short, don't do this unless you know exactly what you are doing. All right, let's go. So today I'll be making a compound called ketene, which is uh, the standard nomenclature is ethenone, but uh, it's commonly called ketene. Unfortunately, ketenes are also a class of compounds which just have this sort of structure here, a, a basically ketone, which is uh, right next to a double bond there. So you get a ketone ene, right? So anyway, um, ketene itself, though, is commonly referred to as this compound here. And uh, it's pretty easily made by the pyrolysis of acetone. So this is acetone here, and uh, with some heat, it's about uh, five or 600 degrees C, you end up with ketene and methane. Of course, this needs to be done in an environment where there's no oxygen present, otherwise it'll just burn up. So you pyrolyze the acetone, you end up with methane and ketene, the ketene itself is highly reactive, as you can probably see by its, uh, by its structure there, and uh, it reacts with water very easily to form acetic acid. In fact, it acetylates a lot of things, so basically you're just acetylating the water or hydrolyzing the ketene, whichever way you want to look at it, to form the acetic acid. Anyway, uh, it'll also react with acetic acid to form acetic anhydride, which is the compound that we're after. I've tried to manufacture acetic anhydride directly from water by starting to bubble the ketene directly into water to form the acetic acid, and then once it becomes 100% acetic acid, then the conversion to acetic anhydride is, is quickly uh, followed thereafter. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work that way. There are enough side reactions with the acetone and the pyrolysis and things like that that uh, you end up with about 70% acetic acid before absorption of the ketene into the solution completely stops. And I've been uh, ascertaining this by weight. I've been running this generator pretty much all week trying to figure out a good way to do this. So essentially, uh, you can start with either glacial acetic acid and go directly to acetic anhydride very quickly, or you can go from water and go to about 70% acetic acid very quickly. Uh, but at that point, the acetic acid will have to be taken out and uh, fractionally distilled to get pure acetic acid to start again with this step. It has to be separated somewhere in between because uh, otherwise there are too many side reactions and you end up polymerizing everything beyond that. So anyway, uh, I've set up a generator to do this as you might have seen in a previous video. I've got it all set up now, so let's, uh, let's go have a look at it and uh, we'll make some acetic anhydride. So this monstrous piece of apparatus is the ketene generator itself. Uh, as outlined, if you want to look it up, it's in uh, I believe Vogel's Organic Chem textbook. It's pretty much the exact same setup with a few modifications, of course. The ketene lamp isn't quite the same, but uh, it does work just as well. So essentially there's a heating mantle here which refluxes acetone. That is acetone. Those are degradation products from the filament and the copper wires. I'll get into that in a second. So that's acetone. It refluxes up through this chrom chromatography column bulb uh, and then into this Claisen adapter up here where it hits this condenser and it falls all the way back down. Now in the, in the middle here of course it has to pass this filament and this filament is heated uh, quite hot to uh, about red heat which in Fahrenheit is like 1500 that's probably like maybe six or seven hundred Celsius. Anyway uh, these electrodes here supply the uh, the uh, filament with power and you can see how I built that in a previous video um, and the power is supplied by this variac. And I've found for the length of nichrome I'm using uh, 40-ish volts works just fine. It's a 20 amp variac so I'm not really worried about burning anything out. Anyway, the uh, acetone is of, course, is of course returned by the reflux condenser here but the ketene having a much lower boiling point and same thing with the methane passes the condenser and ends up up here and uh, it travels down this gram condenser here which is a really efficient condenser and this is to strip any remaining bits of acetone vapor and stuff like that out and you can see it does collect some pyrolysis products of uh, you know diketene and things like that. Ketene is actually photosens photosensitive so uh, you kind of want to run this uh, out of direct sunlight otherwise you'll end up with a lot more pyrolysis products than uh, 
than normal. Anyway, the finishing condenser strips out any of the, uh, the heavier impurities, and so you're left with nothing but the ketene and methane coming out this tube here, where it gets bubbled into a uh, flask of whatever you want, which is not shown here, of course, but will, in a short period of time, be uh, acetic acid. So anyway, uh, I'm going to set this up. The first thing to do is to uh, get the acetone refluxing, because, of course, you can't turn the filament on without uh, blowing everything up unless you have this entire thing filled with acetone vapor. Very, very important, right, because there's oxygen in there now. So... Uh, I'll, leave, I'll turn on the heating mantle here, and we'll get the acetone refluxing, and uh, I'll get set up with some glacial acetic acid in the container there, and we'll go ahead and generate some acetic anhydride. The acetone is now refluxing happily. You can see it running down the walls of the flask here, and uh, dripping from the reflux condenser. And uh, that means that uh, the generator is ready to go. All you do is turn on the filament. But first, we'll set up the uh, absorption flask over here. I've uh, weighed out 30.9 grams of uh, commercial glacial acetic acid, um, which is sort of essential for reasons I've mentioned before, how uh, starting from water is kind of a pain unless you do a distillation in the middle. But I showed how to make acetic acid before, so we'll start with glacial acetic acid. It's at 30.9 grams, and this should absorb uh, ketene until it weighs 52.5 grams, at which point it will be uh, purely acetic anhydride. So, uh, get the absorption here. We'll just get the tube down in the flask. And the excess will vent out the top, as with the methane and everything, and just be pulled out by the hood. And again, you know, toxicity is extreme with this stuff, so really, this has got to be uh, extremely carefully monitored. A smoke test is always a good idea as well. If you have, like, a smoke bomb or something like that, just put it on the bench. And if you get any smoke in the room, rather than going straight out the hood, then, uh, Need to reevaluate the setup. All right, so there we go. We're all set to go. I just need to turn on the filament, and uh, when I do so, you'll see that bubbles will immediately begin to form. Uh, but I'll focus on the filament really fast. You can see it heat up. I'll get the uh, the lights dimmed here. All right, filament in three, two, one, power. And there you go. You can see it's. Uh, happily glowing a dull red color. It shows it more purple on the camera because the camera picks up a lot of IR. But, uh, yep, there you go. That's what it looks like in the light. Not, not that bright. And we are generating ketene now. So uh, it's time for me to get out of here and uh, get some PPE and stuff. So anyway, we'll let that bubble until it's gained uh, the correct amount of weight. Well, here we are about 80 minutes later. I've shut down the reactor. It's still uh, bubbling down. And you can see that uh, the flask has gained substantial volume, and it's also quite warm as it's uh, as the reaction of acetic and high, or this acetic acid with ketene has uh, taken place. Anyway, I'm going to weigh this flask and we'll figure out how much it weighs <clears throat> and see uh, that the conversion to acetic hydride is substantial. I've been weighing it every, every 20 minutes or so. It's been uh, 80 minutes, like I said, and uh, this has gained uh, almost exactly the correct amount of weight. So we can do some presumptive tests for acetic anhydride and uh, call it a day. To show that the product is acetic anhydride, I've prepared three tubes here, each with uh, some distilled water in them. And uh, in one tube, I'm going to place some commercial acetic anhydride. And uh, we'll see how it behaves uh, when it reacts with the water. I'll also put some uh, glacial acetic acid, again, commercial, in uh, this tube over here, since that's what we started with. And then in the middle tube, I'll place some of the product that we just made, and we'll note how that behaves and see how it compares to those two. Although I can say from uh, running this generator all week that this is uh, substantially pure acetic anhydride. So first anhydride to the water. And you can see it goes straight to the bottom and uh, sort of layers out. See it down there? Now, acetic anhydride uh, doesn't hydrolyze that rapidly in cold water, so you can see it'll actually form a separate layer, uh, but that, after about 10 minutes, will, uh, will have gone away. Reactive with the water, of course, to form uh, acetic acid, as all anhydrides do. They react with water to go back to the acid state. Now, if we go to the acetic acid, I'll pipe at a similar amount to there, you can see immediately that it uh, it just mixes with it. There's no 
extra state, no globs, nothing, it just mixed right in. So if this is uh, acetic acid still, it should mix. If it's a portion of acetic acid, a uh, portion of it should mix. And if it's acetic anhydride, it shouldn't mix at all. So let's uh, do a presumptive test here. There we go. And as you can see, it's shot straight to the bottom in little globs. And now there's a blob on the bottom. Showing that, that is substantially pure acetic anhydride. And in fact, uh, like I said from earlier in the week, distillation has proved that. I've gone ahead and uh, run this through a fractionated column to see if I can strip any acetic acid out of it. But uh, there really wasn't much in there. So, and it gained uh, like 101.4% of, uh, of the weight that it should gain to be uh, fully converted, which makes sense because this is 99.7% acetic acid. So anyway, works out really well. It's kind of a dangerous process, but uh, if you need acetic anhydride, there you go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making it, and of course now I have a whole bunch of acetic anhydride that I need to do something with, and I hope to make a cool video with it. But uh, anyway, I have a new Patreon account. I'll link it in the description below. I know some of you have mentioned, uh, asked me for a Patreon account so you could donate, which uh, I didn't really think about before, but I think is probably a really good idea. I can use it to, uh, you know, buy apparatus and labware and stuff and keep giving you guys these cool videos. So anyway, if you feel like donating, uh, have at it. I really appreciate it if you do. And uh, yeah, if you want to leave a comment, let me know. I'll, uh, I'll see if I can respond. And as always, uh, like and subscribe.